This is Yamanashi, one of Japan's 47 prefectures and I'm not going to pretend to be a paragon of travel knowledge when it comes on to it because I will be exploring this prefecture blindly but I did a little research and this is what I found. Yamanashi is located to the southwest of Tokyo on the island of Honshu. It encompasses the northern part of Mount Fuji where hundreds of thousands of visitors climb to the summit every year. In the Fuji Five Lakes area, resort towns surround the lakes created by the iconic mountain's eruption. The region is renowned for hiking, climbing, fishing and skiing. But we won't be doing any of that today. Unfortunately, quite literally, I found myself trapped in a Japanese love hotel where what started off as a beautiful day went south rather quickly. So right now I'm in the mountains. When it comes on to traveling through Japan, it's like it would make more sense to maybe have a motorcycle or a bicycle or well, motorcycle. Uh, because when you're driving, you can't really just stop randomly in certain locations because of space constraints, right? Okay, so we've arrived um, at this spot. You guys can't tell, but Mount Fuji is right behind behind the, that cloud covered yes behind the clouds it's, it's a cloudy day so it's a pretty cloudy day so you guys can see it but that's mount fuji over there this is lake kawaguchiko please rain don't start the rain is actually starting right now it's i hope it's a light drizzle so i'm at the hotel right now um it's a it's a bit odd because <laughs> um i wasn't given the like I guess a room number? It says room one, so I'm assuming that that's what it means. And um, I have no idea how I get in. So this is a odd um, spot. However, the reviews seem good. Um, I've never been to a place like this before. So... Oh! Oh, wait. <laughs> Okay, so I guess you just open the door. So let me go inside. The problem is I booked this thing online. So. Oh. <laughs> this is so, I've never been to a spot like this. Oh, wow, okay. Fingers crossed I have internet, I'm not even sure. Um, but this is a motel. Uh, so the doors are open. I guess once you go inside, you close the door yourself. I paid 158 and for this place like a dollar fifty or like one dollar. But I'm not being entirely honest <laughs> um, because I I had a discount at some points. So I used some points, um, but the room is actually about thirty bucks. Uh, pretty decent. So this is one of those interesting um, travel stories that um, you know you only hear on the internet or you see in a movie or on a TV show. Um, <laughs> there's always some funny stories to tell you guys, uh, but I haven't shared a lot of them. Maybe I need to make some story time videos and share some of these stories. I'm in the midst of one right now. I use just a few different, not a lot, maybe a couple different um, websites and applications to book my hotels and places, whether it's Airbnb, Expedia, etc. Right? And um, so, usually, when I'm in a place or before I go to a place, I look up a spot, you know, a certain price, a certain rate in a certain area, book the spot. Last night, I booked this place right when I came here, and um, it's a different spot, and I am almost 100% sure it's a love hotel. Um, and uh, not just, yeah, it's a love hotel. Um, I'm not sure the categorizations of love hotels, if they have different types or kinds, but I've never seen uh, a spot like this before. And quite effectively, I'm stuck inside because the door 
is an automatic door that I guess locks and only unlocks when you pay for the time you've spent in the room. So the first thing I saw when I came in, I saw this exchange machine right um, at the door. And when I opened the refrigerator, it's like you got to put coins in so a beverage can be dispensed. So when I saw the exchange machine, I'm like, okay, that's, that must be so you can change money to access the refrigerator, whatever. First thing I saw that was odd was there's a magazine here, like um, an X-rated magazine. And I'm like, what in the world? Do they have these things in hotel rooms? I'm like, what? What if, I don't know, someone comes in here that shouldn't see that magazine. When I looked at the bed by the bed behind me, there were some condoms, right? Just waiting to be used. I was talking to my wife and I'm like, yo, you, you wouldn't believe the book I saw in this spot. And she's like, um, you know, are there numbers to call? So when I started flipping through the book, I realized that they have these Japanese women in the book and there are phone numbers and rates, right? So based on what's taking place right now, I guess this is like a spot that people just come to and um, copulate. Uh, so anyways, I already paid for the room on Expedia. So my dilemma really started when uh, I tried to exit the spot because I was trying to get out. I'm like, the door's not working. So I'm like, okay, maybe I need to press this button or whatever. I was pressing it, turn the lock, you know, horizontally push, never work, turn it vertically, press the button, push. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm doing it wrong. But the button, it's not even a button. And <laughs> that little thing at the top, this knob, it has nothing to do with <laughs> um, disengaging the lock. I'm like, okay, wait. Are you trying to tell me that this is the way this place works? So it seems like um, people come in, they just, you know, you just roll up, you look for a room, uh, a circle denotes that the room is free, X means it's occupied, right? So I saw the circle, so I guess people would come in, you look for an available room, you know, you go inside there, you do whatever you gotta do, make a call, whatever you do, and then once you're through, you pay your money and then you get out, right? You pay your money, the door is unlocked and then you can go your merry way. So right now I'm being held prisoner um, because uh, I already paid online. So yeah, so I'm stranded right now. I called the owners to try to release me, but there seems to be some complications, so. Guys, this was a very, very odd day. I'll tell you guys a full story, man. Like, the time now is it's after 2, so it's like about 2.20 2 20 p.m. And I've been stranded, like locked up in the hotel for so long. Like, I'll give you guys a full story, but of course, um, I'm being escorted. Uh, I'll give you guys a 411 uh, when I get into the car, man. This this was a, has been a crazy day. Very odd experience. Very, very odd. This has been a tough day. Anyways, what happened was we figured out what the name of this hotel was. You know, um, the people came, I don't know, after maybe two or three hours and uh, opened the door, told me I got to pay 10,000 and which is about $100, maybe $92 US. Because of course, there's like a base rate and then the longer you stay in this place, the more money you have to pay. I was at the wrong hotel. I know this sounds crazy, right? But it was even crazier to live it, to actually experience this thing. You saw the video. I sat in the motel in the morning and I filmed. I'm like, this is something that only happens in a movie because that's how it felt. It felt so unreal. And the thing is, so many factors had to come into perfect alignment for this thing to happen, right? One, Google Maps, I was following the address. It brought me to the right spot. Well, <laughs> not the right spot. But once I enter the property, it said, you have arrived. The application did say that. But the thing is, this was the wrong hotel. This was the wrong accommodation. This wasn't a place that I booked online. It was next door, literally next door to the actual spot that they said they waited for me until 1 a.m. to check in, but I never showed up. So they, um, yeah, they just went about their business. But what happened was I was driving. Google said within, I don't know, maybe 100 meters, they're about to take a right turn, right? When I looked um, ahead, upright, I saw like this neon sign, only a piece of it that said hotel in Katakana. I'm like, okay, cool. Immediately I saw that. I'm like, okay, cool, right turn. I'm going up there. Never in a million years did I think that 
there were at least two hotels on that little uh, on that little hill, right? I thought it was just one. I was looking. I'm like, it was dark, of course. I saw the, the neon sign, only a piece of the name. I just assumed that this was the right place, right? In a <laughs> a normal experience, right? In something that is not from a movie. Uh, you would have rolled up to the spot, you know, maybe went in and then check in and then they would say, oh, well, hey, wait, wrong place. Or you might end up seeing the name plastered somewhere and you're like, wait, that's not the name that I saw online, right? But that never happened. I saw the neon sign, took a right, went up, drove in, right? I'm like, okay, I'm at the place. I was looking around. I'm like, okay, this place seems a little bit odd. But the correspondence from the application I was using said, this property does not have any front desk. And that was a thing that threw me off because this was the very first place I've ever been to where the correspondence I received said I should not expect a front desk at this property. So this place, front desk, no front desk, nope, check. Cool. Google Maps said you have arrived, correct address, check. Right? So I'm like, okay, cool. All right, looks a little bit strange. I was also wondering how am I going to know which room to go into? <laughs> so I went back to the email. I checked, I saw room one. I'm like, okay, room one, eight rooms. So I guess room number one is the very first room down the bottom there. One oh, what, one oh something, whatever it was. Went down there, drove, <laughs> there's a little parking spot. Uh, I tried to open the door, you guys saw that. Went in, voila, the door opened. Okay, cool, it must be the right place. A bit strange, but hey, everything is just working the way it should. So I'm like, okay. A few things seemed a bit odd, but I wasn't sure. I'm like, okay, you know, places are different. I've, I've stayed at so many hotels. This might just be one that's a little bit different. Hey, who knows? So when I realized that I was stuck, right, I tried to call the property, um, the property manager or the hotel number that's on the application. So I'm calling it to, uh, to talk to someone to say, listen, man, I already paid online. This, I'm stuck. I'm not sure how to get out. What's wrong with the door? All this time... Not knowing that I was calling the wrong hotel, I was calling the hotel that I should have stayed at, which is located next door. Right. Anyways, long story short, I ended up talking to another person and explaining that I'm I'm stuck. And the person like, okay, you know, we got to the bottom of it, realized that I was actually at the wrong spot. And then the guy's like, look, man, you're listening. You call the police, uh, 110. The guy sounded legitimately concerned, right? He's saying, call 110, call the police, let them know they are stranded in this place. The guy even told me to call him back once I got out so that he could confirm that I was okay, right? This was how concerned this guy was. That was what happened. Um, I am not making this thing up. Crazy episode, um, but that was what happened. Uh, if you find yourself in Japan... Uh, watch out for these places, right? Watch out for these places. You know, I described it in this video. If you see a spot like that, run for your life because once the door is closed, you're stuck. Make sure you have cash. You know, all things considered, it was an experience. And um, yeah, that's the story of how I got trapped in a motel in Japan. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, <laughs> bye for now.